As 2025 unfolds, Lake Kariba, a beacon of life and energy for Zambia and Zimbabwe, stands transformed. What was once a sprawling expanse of water has become a fractured landscape. Its shores continue to retreat under the relentless grip of an unforgiving drought. For local communities, the lake is not just water, it is life. Fishermen who once thrived here now struggle to bring home enough to feed their families. Dwindling catches are reported and islands are emerging from previously submerged areas. So business here to be down. Plus, for a couple of Namvula, if then Yamina Silo Cabuino, Nakuma Fisherman, Swapa, and some by Monga Mavens of Paila Kudan. Consul Kotura King, business had to put up with the fans. Elom business, Mamino Mundio Menet Sungira family. For the people of Siavonga, the drought's impact on Lake Kariba has been particularly severe. District authorities describe the lake as a lifeline for many communities in the area. District Commissioner Geoffrey Jacopo shares his thoughts on how the drought has disrupted the livelihoods of small-scale and commercial fish traders who heavily rely on the lake's resources. You know, this being the powerhouse for uh, the electricity, that is driving the national economy. It has also impacted negatively because the waters have gone down and for the first time we have even seen islands that we have never seen from the time when the Kariba Dam was constructed. Uh, we are seeing them and uh, you know you can see uh, how much it has impacted negatively. Uh, to us and uh, also you know the fishermen have equally been uh, affected when I talk of fishermen I even uh, talk of the what the commercial fishermen like the Zamb the what the Zamfresh Yarelo and other companies that are in, you know, fish farming. The water levels have gone down to an, to an, an extent that they are even now moving cages from shallows to deep waters, now going right in the uh, main lake. Uh, that has really impacted negatively. To small fishermen, the catches that they used to catch when the waters were uh, high, they are no longer because you know the outer of the lake, that's where you find grass, food for fish. Now where the water levels have gone is only sand, uh, which is not health for our aqua you know, culture. But it is not just livelihoods at stake. Energy production at the Caribal North Bank Power Station is teetering on the brink of imminent interruption due to climate shocks. The Caribal North Bank Power Station is one of Zambia's largest power generation facilities. It has an installed capacity of 1,080 megawatts. It ranks among the top hydroelectric power stations in the country. 
However, following the 2023-2024 drought, Lake Kariba water levels plummeted from the usual 13 meters high to an alarming 30 centimeters of usable storage for electricity. As a result, the power plant could no longer generate the required amounts of electricity. It has not been easy uh, because we didn't really receive enough rains, and as of that, we've been trying to just manage with a little water by just running one or two machines. Uh, as we'll speak now, out of the six generating units, we are only running one machine. Even the one machine, we can't go to the maximum because each machine is rated 108 megawatts. So we are only doing about 110 megawatts on each machine. And because we can't pack the other machines, we keep on uh, rotating on a daily basis. And because and as of that, we have also uh, taken advantage of this situation to do uh, maintenance on most of the machines in readiness for the water. The focus for this year uh, is showing that we are going to receive more than we received uh, last year. Uh, but as you can see from the lake, we are on the very low side to mean that we will need to uh, spend some time in trying to build up on the uh, lake level. So because of that, as ZESCO, we, we've planned that uh, January and part of February will still continue doing load generation so that we wait for most of the water that will come from uh, northwestern and western province. The drought's reach extends beyond the lake's shores, ecosystems are collapsing, and energy shortages threaten industries and homes across the country. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, the Zambezi River Authority, ZRA, a bilateral organization jointly owned by the governments of Zambia and Zimbabwe, is advocating for the construction of upstream water reservoirs to shield Kariba from future droughts. According to experts, upstream reservoirs could safeguard the Kariba Dam from future climatic shocks, but ZRA will require close to 4 billion US dollars to make this vision a reality. Now it so happens that geographically we are blessed. There are two dam sites upstream of Kariba. The first one, which is well known because it has been well studied and is moving towards implementation, is the Batoka Gorge Hydroelectric Scheme, located near Livingstone in Zambia or Victoria Falls Town in Zimbabwe. Basically about 47 kilometers downstream of the mighty Victoria Falls falling curtain, uh, curtain of water. That site, the feasibility studies are done the environmental impact assessment is done and we are now moving into the phase of mobilizing resources for the project to be implemented. This project is over three, four billion dollars, the Batoka Gorge. So it is going to take a lot of effort in terms of mobilizing that kind of money to do the project. But everything is in place in terms of what is required to start the mobilization process to get the project done. Now, downstream of the Batoka Gorge hydroelectric scheme, but upstream of Kariba, there's another site. It's called Devil's Gorge. It's also now advancing in the feasibility studies. ZRA has also made strides in dam safety, investing in advanced monitoring tools to manage risks amid increasing seismic activity in the Kariba area. This region is uh, a naturally active zone. So with or without the presence of the Kariba Dam, it's a naturally active zone. So there are earthquakes uh, that happened even before the construction of the, of the dam. Kariba is equipped with um, several um, instruments, but over the history of the dam, these have mainly been uh, manual, and we have started automating, so some of them have been automated, so gradually we are continually automating this, but we will do it uh, in phases because of the costs that are involved. So the program that I've just mentioned right now, we, um, we, it's about a million US, United States dollars. But obviously there are other studies that we are doing outside of that program that we are implementing starting in January 2025. ZRA plays a pivotal role in addressing current and future challenges. The organization is tasked with operating, maintaining and regulating water levels in the Kariba Reservoir. Additionally, ZRA collects and processes vitro hydrological and environmental data for the socio-economic development of both Zambia and Zimbabwe. The Zambezi River Authority is a bilateral organization that is jointly and equally owned by the governments of the republics of Zambia and Zimbabwe. The primary objective of the Zambezi River Authority is to operate, maintain, monitor 
and regulate the water level in Lake Kariba, what we call the Kariba Reservoir. In addition to that, the authority is mandated to construct additional dam infrastructure on the Zambezi River, the section that forms a common border between Zambia and Zimbabwe. To manage the delicate balance between human needs and environmental demands, ZRA conducts comprehensive water sampling and other tests along the Zambezi River. These assessments are critical for ensuring water quality and addressing emerging challenges tied to climate variability. The essence of analyzing these parameters, you want to uh, establish the health of the uh, aquatic ecosystem. Uh, when you are talking, for example, uh, you are talking about power generation there. One of the problems you have, or which we are still managing, we haven't yet experienced those, but it's on the watch list. It's the effect of uh, floating water hyacinth or plants. So those ones, you find them like along the shorelines. It's just that it's, uh, the quantities are low now and the drawdown of the waters have left some of the water weeds stranded. Yeah, but uh, when the water is rising, then you see the shoreline uh, being watered, fresh germination of the plant. Then uh, around June, July, thereabout, when the lake, lake is at peak height, then you see them floating around from water and the uh, wave action. Now with those uh, plants, some of the nutrients that will feed their growth or proliferation, it's the nitrates and the phosphates. So that's why it's important to measure some of these parameters in here. If you have more of those, then you'll be talking about, it will give you an indicator of what is likely to happen uh, uh, from the uh, invasive weeds. At its maximum in uh, around the 1998 thereabout, the water hyacinth had covered about 4,000 hectares uh, of this water body. So you, you can imagine then uh, that biomass, it goes to the dam wall, those uh, uh, floating booms you've seen there, uh, they are able to break down or sink. Uh -huh. So if that uh, boom is not able to uh, contain, then they will go into the intake and that can clog the, the water intake and affect the generating units. So it's important to monitor the quality, not, not only from the water house inside, but also the, the livelihood, or let's talk about the health of the fish and other aquatic fauna or flora. Crisis around Kariba looms, there is still hope. Hydrologists are predicting improved water allocations in 2025. In a good year, the maximum allocation is 40 billion cubic meters. However, 2024 saw 16 billion cubic meters shared between Zesco and the Zimbabwe Power Company. We had planned that uh, our um, management for, of water in 2024 was going to be uh, critical in the sense that we're going to re reduce the allocation. We do allocate water to the power utilities, which is the power company that generates power. Zimbabwe Power Company in Zimbabwe and Zesco in Zambia. So we allocated them an agreed amount of 16 billion instead of um, in the order of 30 billion, which would normally give under a good year. So to, to, to safeguard and also sustain generation into 2024 to the end, we, we allocated less water because we are expecting also less inflows into the lake. So that's one, one, one aspect. And then going forward also, we, we implemented um, consistent uh, weekly meetings with the utilities so that we monitor each other and gauge on where we are. And we keep controlling and regulating uh, as we go. Yeah. And so as we speak, what we are experiencing now in terms of uh, uh, lake level status is, uh, was actually foreseen in, the, in our models as we are planning uh, for 2024. Now, Talking about plans for, for 2025 and yeah, going forward, we, we again consulted again the experts in the climate, in the weather systems. That showed that 2024-25 season, rainfall might actually be better than the where we're coming from. So we 
kind of almost doubled, but we, we just we gave a conservative allocation of 27 billion for 2025 to be shared equally between the two power entities in Zimbabwe and Zambia for power generation. Already you can see there's a slight increase uh, from the 16 that we had in 2024 to 27 billion that we are allocating for 2025. The projection for 2025 being 27 billion cubic meters of water allocation for power generation from Kariba by Zambezi River Authority, who sees ESCO and Zimbabwe Power Company share 13.5 billion cubic meters for each power company. Upstream sites, the Devil's Gorge and in particular the Batoka, the drop through which water goes, or if you like, the depth of the gorges, is actually deeper than at Kariba. You can generate more power at the other two upstream facilities than at Kariba. So as a result, if we're able to generate higher power, we can scale down at Kariba and bank water here, releasing enough to support ecosystems downstream and the needs of downstream communities all the way to Mozambique. So that is a strategy we're working on so that at some point, we'll be able to manage and maintain high water levels at Kariba, taking advantage of facilities that would have been established, which are similar to Kariba, but more advanced in terms of power generation, namely the Batoka Gorge and the Devil's Gorge. Climate change is here, and climate change is here to stay. But the best thing we can do is to ensure that we've got some climate adaptability and mitigation strategies in place. The idea behind building additional dam infrastructure, especially upstream of the Kariba Reservoir, is to ensure that we have what we call a cascading operation of dams or conjunctive operation of dams. What this means is that we will literally be recycling water whatever water flows into the Batoka Gorge Hydroelectric Scheme, the dam part of it, will also be used at Devil's Gorge. That same water will be used at Kariba. The same water will flow down to Mupata and eventually flow down to Hydro Kabura, to Kabura Basa down in Mozambique. This means that it doesn't matter how little the rainfall or the inflows that we have into the lake are at that point. Technically, even if we were to get a minimum worst case scenario, we get 20 billion cubic meters of water, for example. Instead of having that water only generating power at Kariba, that same PC, 20 billion cubic meters of water will be used upstream twice before it is eventually used at Kariba. Lake Kariba, a testament of human creativity and nature's power, stands at crossroads. The choices made today will determine whether it continues to sustain life and light for generations to come. Mm -hmm.